Hi, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and we're picking up where we left off in the last demo of the Maya Render Setup System that was added a couple of releases ago, and a little bit about how that ties in with Arnold. We covered how to build render layers and collections of objects for those layers, and now we're going to talk a little bit about how to use overrides to modify the contents of those layers. So I'm still working with the car here. I've got that defined by the collection, but the next thing I want to do is create what's called an override. Now an override can be done in different ways. We have material overrides, which would basically allow me to override the look of the material for that particular object or series of objects. Shader will include things like displacement. We have absolute and relative overrides, which work on a per attribute level. Uh, I'll show examples of that. And then a connection override would be something like if you have a texture connected to a shader, you can override the connection of that texture to a particular shader. So let's start with a simple material override. That's probably the easiest to demonstrate. And I'll just uh, leave the kind of default name there. And we'll go in and we'll expand the property editor here. And what you can see is that I get now a option to load any given material into this. So for instance, if I wanted to load a Maya Blend or Lambert, or if I wanted to go into the Arnold setting and load something like uh, Ar an Arnold shader, which is what I want to do in this case. So I will load an Arnold standard surface shader. And as soon as I do, that will apply the override of that shader to the car objects. And you can see that the override itself is independent. I can turn that off and it gives me all of my original shader connections back. I turn that on and it overrides the shaders once again. So it's very easy in that sense. You can delete it and you remove the effect altogether. Right now, this is affecting everything in my car because it's associated with the car collection, which is basically all the nodes for the car. What I can also do is I can create a sub collection, basically. You can create hierarchies of collections, which was new in 2017. The ability to basically go in and create a collection, which is a child of another collection. So we'll call this the body collection. And instead of using a wildcard, I'll just go in and I'll just grab the body explicitly and I'll add that to that collection. So now I've got the car collection, which contains everything in the car. And then I've got the body collection, which only contains this particular node. Now what I can do is just drag and drop that material override. And now you'll see the material override only affects the child, which contains the body and it doesn't contain the entire car. So you can see if I disable that material override, I get all of my original materials back. If I enable that material override, now it only overrides the body of the car. So now I could go in and grab the material for this particular object. Let's say I go into the uh, attribute editor and I, I grab this particular material and I'll just go in and add a preset and we'll do something like a gold car. And now you can see Sure enough, I get a gold car rendered out. If I turn that off, I get my red car back. So we can actually get rid of that. I don't really need it anymore. And actually we'll get rid of that body layer. And now I'm back to where I started where I just have a collection for the car itself. So now I'll talk about a different type of override and that would be an attribute override. So what I wanna do is instead of overriding the entire shader, I wanna actually override just a parameter on the shader. So if you look, I've got the, the red color for the body. And if I scroll down here, I've got a matte channel. If I enable that matte, what that will do is it will mask that out and give me a color that I can use for a matte for compositing purposes. So this could be any color I want. It could be black or white or anywhere in between any color in the spectrum. Uh, and what I can do is I can turn that on and off just with a simple toggle. But I can basically override any one of these specific attributes, whether it be on the shader or whether it be on any other node, but in this case, the shader or the material, uh, I can do that through a collection and an override. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the enable mat, and then I will create an absolute override. And with the collection selected, what that will do is it will extract a subset of that, it will basically create a sub collection or a hierarchy that contains only the shaders that are associated with all those objects. So I have car collection, which contains everything having to do with the car. And then I have the car collection shaders. And you can see here, you can filter out the uh, collection to only contain things that you care about. So you can have it only contain shapes or only contain shaders or only contain lights and so on. Because I did this from the attribute editor in the shader, it, auto it automatically knew to create a shader collection. 
and then it automatically put the enable mat attribute in there. So let me give myself a little bit more space and I'll kind of show you how this works. We don't need the outliner, let's get rid of that. So now if I turn this on and off, what you can see is it enables the mat for everything associated with this entire layer. So turning that on and off, right now it looks like it's only affecting the car, but that's only because the car is the only one that I've set to white. Each one of these can now have their own color. So I can say I set the window to blue, I can go in and I can set the wheels to be green, I can go in and set the tires to be something like a yellow, and I can just kind of continue along this line. I'm not going to do all these, but you get the, the basic idea. Let's make this one a little bit more uh, visual, something like that. So beautiful. So now you can see that when I toggle on the matte override, now that turns it off and turns it on in unison. So it does it for everything that is a part of that layer. And if I just turn off the override itself, it removes that effect. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the kinds of overrides you can create. I'm going to show you one more example of an override, and that would be not at the shader level, but at the object level. So you can create an override on any arbitrary attribute. So for instance, I can go in here and I can create a collection once again. I'll just create a collection, and this time we'll call this the wheel collection. And specifically, I'm going to be dealing with the front right wheel. So I'll just grab the wheel here. I'll go up to the highest node and I will add that into my collection. And now what I'll do is I'll create an attribute override. So instead of overriding something like a shader parameter, I'm gonna be doing an absolute override of a transform, basically. So you can choose any arbitrary attribute. So I'm gonna come in here and say I want to do a rotate that automatically finds the rotate channel. You'll see it highlights it over here in the attribute editor. Now, any changes that I make, as long as that layer is active, get stored as an override. So now what you can see is that negative 28, or I could put that at specifically at negative 30 from here. You can use the manipulator or the, the channel here. And now you can see that the render view, sure enough, updates. If I turn that override off, you can see the original orientation of the wheel, and then there's the orientation with the override. So you can make all kinds of changes to different types of objects, whether they be shaders or lights or textures or transforms. Uh, you can make those changes easily. And then of course you can just delete the override and you get everything in your scene back the way it was before you started.